Come with us to be one of the first to ride Magic Kingdom's brand new Tiana's Bayou Adventure and find out what we think about this ride re-theme. How does it compare to Splash Mountain? How does the story play out? And why does it keep breaking down? <laughs> Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. So Tiana's Bayou Adventure will officially open on June 28th in Magic Kingdom. Still waiting on that Disneyland opening date, but select groups are getting to ride before it officially opens. We were lucky enough to experience the ride early, so we're taking you inside with us, troubles and all, to see how it turned out. Tiana's Bayou Adventure takes place after the movie, so Tiana's back to being a human and she's got her own restaurant. The story of the attraction is set about a year after the movie and picks up during New Orleans carnival season. Tiana's hosting a Mardi Gras party but quickly realizes she's missing a key ingredient and you're gonna help her find it. The key ingredient is a band made up of animals from the bayou. Along the way, riders encounter more characters from the film, including Mama Odie, who shrinks everyone down in size to join in the search for fireflies. And just before that big drop, you're turned back to regular size because the bigger you are, the bigger splash you'll make. The finale scene is the Mardi Gras party with a brand new song created just for the ride. In addition to that brand new song, Special Spice, the ride also has songs from the movie, like Down in New Orleans, Orleans, almost there, gonna take you there and dig a little deeper. The layout and ride mechanics haven't changed since this was Splash Mountain, so it's still nearly a 12 minute log flume ride with a five story drop and a 40 inch height requirement. So the story of the attraction begins in the ride's queue line, where you're gonna discover that Tiana wants to further bring the community together as she continues to grow her business with the addition of Tiana's Foods, which is employee-owned co-op. She's bought and transformed an old large salt dome, that's the mountain, with the help of her mother, Naveen, Lewis, and fellow owners of the cooperative where she and her employees work together. They make food products like hot sauce and spice blends, some of which you can actually buy in the park. And in the outdoor section of the queue, you're gonna see vegetables and herbs growing. You'll want to keep your head on a swivel when you're walking through the ride queue because there are loads of hidden details before you even get on the ride. Throughout the queue, you'll see tributes to the U.S. military as Tiana's father served in the 369th Regiment, which is one of the first African-American regiments to serve with the American Expeditionary Forces during World War I. Remember to look down before you walk into the queue. There's some tile work with a nod to Ray and Evangeline, two stars in the night sky. They are also represented in the tiara on the water tower. You'll also pass a car in the queue line that has a missing license plate. You'll find that license plate in the ride being played like a washboard by Gritty the Rabbit. Beyond what you'll see, Imagineers have been focusing on the use of a New Orleans soundscape to make visitors feel like they're actually there. There's a fake radio station playing featuring reimagined New Orleans classic songs, and as you wind your way through the queue, you'll come across a kitchen area with beignets, and you can actually smell them. Good thing you'll be able to buy some in Magic Kingdom after you ride. So how does it compare to its predecessor, Splash Mountain? In June 2020, Disney announced that the water-based ride Splash Mountain would close in both parks to be re-themed into an attraction inspired by the Disney animated film The Princess and the Frog in order to tell a fresh and relevant story that would appeal to a larger and more diverse audience. So how does the new ride compare and are there any nods to the old attraction? Now, you won't find much at all as a relic or homage to Splash Mountain, at least that we could see. The only things we spotted were rabbit, bear, and fox figurines on Tiana's desk in the queue. You'll spot some more as you exit the ride on a mantle. Well, the exterior of the ride has changed quite a bit. Lush greenery now covers the mountain to look like plant life you'll find in the bayou. The queue entrance has been repainted and features murals designed by Louisiana artist Malika Favorite. One of the major changes we noticed before even riding, though, was that the hidden Mickey on the drop is gone. The rock formation on the lift just before the drop has been changed, so you'll no longer see that side profile hidden Mickey. While there are new elements, the base of the ride remains the same. You're still riding in a log through the same track that Splash Mountain used. The difference lies in the new sets and animatronics, music, and smells that can be experienced. Those animatronics are using the newest technology, so they are fluid and more realistic than what we've seen on, say, Frozen Ever After and Epcot. They're a lot more in line with the shaman on Navi River Journey and kind of what we've been seeing in Fantasy Springs over in Tokyo Disney. There are a lot of animatronics, over 30 in total throughout the ride, so keep your eyes open. The iconic Splash Mountain drop is still the same. In theory, it's a five-story drop culminating in a pool of water that will likely leave you pretty soaked. We felt like the drop actually feels much different though. For starters, the whole experience is much less ominous as instead of being tossed into the briar patch, we're instead dropping down into a party. In addition, the reconstructed opening provides a much clearer view of Cinderella Castle from the top of the drop. If you're wanting to celebrate the new ride opening or remember the ride that came before, don't forget that we've got shirts 
that's inspired by the Princess and the Frog and the Critters of Splash Mountain. You can find those tees, plenty more designs, and all of our guidebooks over at dfbstore.com. So let's talk merchandise. There will be two stores filled with Tiana themed merch, but you'll have to go somewhere else to shop, at least at first. Disney has announced that new merchandise for Tiana's Bayou Adventure will be in Magic Kingdom starting on June 28th, but that merch will be sold at the Emporium. Their announcement stated shortly after the attraction debuts, the merchandise will hop over to Critter Co-op in Frontierland. But the announcement did not mention Tiana's Bayou General, the other themed souvenir shop. This would seem to imply that the new merchandise locations either will not be ready to open with the attraction, or at the very least, Disney will not open them initially, possibly as a crowd control measure. Either way, there's a lot of new merch coming. There are two pairs of ears, one with the ride logo on them, the other is a green lotus flower and a tiara design. There's also a whole line of jewelry with the lotus flower motif. You'll find spirit jerseys, new lounge fly backpack, pins, towel, tees, Tiana plush, water bottles, a kids play cooking set. There's also super cute plush of a lot of the critters in the ride. There's also a new Tiana princess dress for kids. You can buy spice blends and hot sauce made in collaboration with Dookie Chase in New Orleans. Along with those ingredients, you'll find cookbooks, aprons, oven mitts, and more kitchen gear. There are also mugs and purses, pillows, so many more clothing items, a magic band plus. Yeah, there's a lot of merch to go along with this ride opening. And it will definitely be very popular on opening day and right after with people swarming the Emporium to be the first to grab some of this collection. Keep that in mind if you're shopping in Magic Kingdom in late June and remember this stuff will be restocked. The big souvenir your kid will be begging for, though, is the interactive firefly. It comes with a little lantern, though you can take him out if you want, and you press the button on your firefly's back to make it light up and interact with other fireflies it sees in the parks. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of these guys in the park come June 28th. There is one souvenir you'll be able to purchase at the ride on opening day, and that's the commemorative photo package. This showcases your ride photo along with some recipes from Tiana. Now, Tiana's Bayou Adventure may not be fully open just yet, but the ride has been in previews and it's been quite an ordeal. This ride has been on the struggle bus. Cast member, Disney Vacation Club, annual pass holder, and D23 previews are happening now as the ride is in a soft opening for those groups, but there have been a lot of breakdowns. Members of the DFB team who've been invited to ride with cast member friends were not able to ride on Monday, June 3rd or Tuesday, June 4th because the ride was down at their designated time and eventually it was broken so long that their reservations were canceled. Even during the media event on June 10th, the ride went down just as we were about to ride. So why is it having so much trouble? It was Splash Mountain for a long time and we didn't see these kind of issues. Disney traditionally doesn't release information about why rides are broken, but we do have some theories. It seems like what we're seeing here is maybe some conflict between the old technology of the ride, which was shut down and dormant for more than a year, and the new technology and new animatronics and ride scenes installed into a ride that that is technically more than 30 years old. We've been told some possible reasons for closures, and again, I stress that we are speculating here and going off information being told to us by cast members in a non-official capacity, but it could have been that when the logs were supposed to sink in the right, not actually sink in the water, but S-Y-N-C sink. <laughs> like the technology, that there were problems there, and wiring setting off fire alarms. Now, the alarms in particular would have to be calibrated as the ride runs and could have been set to be too sensitive. Soft opens are the times that businesses of any kind use to work out any kinks and test things out, so that's definitely part of what we're seeing with Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Regardless of the issues we're seeing now, we hope that they'll be resolved soon and ready to go by June 28th. Now, we've seen a lot of um, vocal reactions and criticisms online. The frequent breakdowns and evacuations aren't helping with the somewhat rough reception Tiana's Bayou Adventure is receiving. Splash Mountain had a very loyal fan base that is upset to see the ride taken away, but this isn't the first ride to be rethemed against fan upheaval. The great movie ride in Maelstrom had fans come out of the woodwork after their announced closures, but fact of the matter is that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Frozen Ever After have longer lines than either of their predecessors, and Disney's trying to make rides that more people will enjoy and feel connected to. May sound a bit harsh, but I would bet you more Disney World visitors have seen The Princess and the Frog than have seen Song of the South. Now, another big criticism we've seen is regarding how the bayou fits into Frontierland, especially when there are no mountains in the bayou. Disney's explained that the mountain in Tiana's Bayou Adventure is actually a salt dome, like the one you'd find on Avery Island in Louisiana, which is where you'll also find the Tabasco Hot Sauce Company. So the mountain is explained, but it does still seem a bit odd to have the bayou in the middle of an old west 
themed area. In Disneyland, the ride will be located in Critter Country, next to New Orleans Square, so that makes things a little more logical. And with the rumblings of a revamped Frontierland in Disney World with the Beyond Big Thunder Mountain project, we could see a full transformation of this area to make that bayou make a little more sense, but again, we don't have details on that. The last criticism I want to address is that the ride is boring or lacks a strong, thrilling plot line. Lots of people were hoping that Dr. Facilier would be in the lead up to the drop with shadow creatures flying around for a dramatic and scary thrill, but since this ride is taking place after the movie, that character's gone and you won't see him at all in the ride. Instead, you've got a happy exploration type of storyline with fun new characters and a lighthearted tone. It's definitely more in the vein of Frozen Ever After. The kids will enjoy the storyline and won't get too scared before that big drop. So while this ride isn't designed with thrill at its core, we think a lot of people will enjoy it once they get a chance to ride. This is a ride that's going to grow on people over time. There are so many elements throughout both the queue and the ride experience itself that it's going to take multiple times through to catch every single reference, Easter egg, and thematic element scattered throughout. So what are our thoughts about it? Well, after seeing those mind-blowing new rides in Tokyo Disney Sea, the bar was set pretty high for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. The animatronics are stunning, and while there are quite a lot of them, we would have enjoyed a few more. They don't all need to be the incredible Tiana and Mama Odie level of movement, but just some more little frogs or other animals would have added a bit more. There are definitely more lulls in the ride than you had with Splash Mountain. And while everything's gorgeous and the attention to detail and the plant life is incredible, we could see some kids getting a little antsy see in the slower parts. Again, every part of this ride is beautiful. We loved all the little things like lily pads being used as umbrellas, but we were hoping for a little more lore within the ride itself. All of the Critter Band has full backstories released by Disney, but you wouldn't know from the ride that Apollo the Raccoon and Rufus the Turtle are best friends, or that playing the license plate washboard calms Gritty the Rabbit's anxiety. Those details are fun and interesting, but not really a part of the larger vibe and plot of the ride story. Most people probably don't need to be made aware of the rabbit's anxiety, but maybe it would have plussed up the ride a little bit? Disney is utilizing screens in this ride as well. This is something that often gets a lot of pushback, but we felt that the screens were pretty well integrated and we loved the Firefly scene. Adding a new end song at the finale of the attraction was also a bit of a gamble, but it is catchy and fun and definitely something that's going to grow on people and become iconic. Overall, Tiana's Bayou Adventure was a pleasant surprise and we enjoyed it more than we thought we might. It is likely not going to top a lot of best rides in the park lists for most people, but it is a long ride, which is nice to have in a park that has many rides that only last a minute or two. It's entertaining and relaxing, well, except for the drop part. It's a nice mix of whimsy and thrill that is honestly more broadly appealing than a ride that only fits into one category. We're really interested to see how this ride could contribute to a changing frontier land, though. Could we see Tiana's Palace come to Disney World? You can find this restaurant in Disneyland currently, but is it just wishful thinking to hope one may show up on the East Coast? We have asked Imagineers in the past and gotten kind of a wink, wink, nod, nod that there definitely might be a Tiana's Palace coming to Disney World, but haven't heard mention of it for a while. For now, you can find Tiana-inspired treats like beignets at Westward Ho and other locations around Magic Kingdom once the ride officially opens, but we're hoping for a more permanent announcement. We speculated that Tortuga Tavern could be ready for a re-theme, so so only time will tell if that's where the announced Pirate Tavern might be located or if Disney has something else in mind or if it's going to stay Tortuga Tavern. Could Pecos Bill be eyed for a beignet and gumbo re-theme? While we're still waiting to hear what might be included in the Beyond Big Thunder expansion of Magic Kingdom, this project seems all but certain to happen with Disney filing permits and getting approval for large expansion projects in the area. Maybe we'll see the bayou extend past the Frontierland train station, or maybe this ride will stay a little island in the Old West. Either way, a lot of changes are coming to the Frontierland area from this summer through the next few years, and we'll be following all the updates. So what should you expect on opening day? Opening day is definitely going to be chaotic, but you won't have to worry about standing out in the sun in a five hour line in order to ride. You will want to plan ahead if you want to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure during the first few months following its opening. Disney World is using a virtual queue slash boarding pass system for the opening phase of Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is available via the My Disney Experience app. This means that traditional standby lines will not be offered at the ride's opening and will not be offered for a little while after that. Guess have two daily opportunities to request to join the virtual queue. The first is at 7 a.m., the second at 1 p.m. Guests trying to request to join the virtual queue at 7 do not have to be inside Magic Kingdom. If you're trying to join the 1 p.m. virtual queue, you do have to be inside the park. 
It seems that Disney is hoping to do away with the virtual queue for this ride as quickly as possible, similar to what we saw when Remy's Ratatouille Adventure opened in Epcot. Tiana's Bayou Adventure will also be available as an option on Disney Genie Plus, kind of the same as Splash Mountain was. To ride, you can purchase Genie Plus for Magic Kingdom or get the multi-park Genie Plus option and reserve a lightning lane for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. You're going to want to do that first thing in the morning though, right at 7 a.m. as soon as those open because that will sell out quickly. And again, we're hopeful that all the issues this ride is experiencing during previews will be taken care of before the official opening. I also think that once people get a chance to experience this ride, a lot of the negative discourse may fade away. It's a delightful, fun ride with some awesome new animatronics and a more popular source material than its predecessor. So we'll see what happens. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Be sure to let us know what you think about Tiana's Bayou Adventure in the comments below. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.